start to believe Listen to your heart Tell me that you understand Cause you are the one for me You just believe You just believe You just believe Yo, 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 people, welcome back to another stream How are we all doing during this international break? I'm gonna preface this stream by saying we have no no crazy stories to talk to you about. We have no mad breaking news to talk to you about. You see the title, Our Man City in Trouble for Arsenal Clash. That, of course, is regarding all of our injuries and players dropping out of international teams. And I'm seeing a lot of panic, but look, it's the international break. First of all, how, how do you lot deal with international breaks? Because I don't know about you, but I get really, really bored. The first few days, I'm like, oh, you know what? I can relax a bit, I can relax a bit, football's off, I can put my mind at ease, and then I start getting that itch again, I, I just, I need shit to talk about, I need, I need some entertainment, um, and international football does not do that for me, but look, first things first, hit that like button, there's nearly 40 of you in the building, you must all be as bored as me during this international break, if there's 40 <laughs> of you here already, <laughs> hit the like button, subscribe if you're new around here. If you want to be a channel member, there's a link in the description. You can be like Harry Briggsy, or there's a link in the chat now. You can be like Harry Briggsy there. He's a channel member, and you're just helping uh, support myself and Joe. Like I said, we want to stream as much as possible, but we also don't want to just stream for the sake of streaming. Isn't it, Joe? I mean, this, when there's fuck all to talk about it, we're not going to clickbait you guys, and we're not going to start making up stories. Like, you see all these other channels, in it over the international break. They're like, what can we do to keep our views up? We'll make transfer rumors. We'll fake transfer rumors. And we'll talk about 115. I ain't gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna bring you guys bullshit transfer rumors. And I'm just not gonna keep talking about charges because it just gets views. Boring. Wait, if we talk about charges, boring because there's nothing that we can add. I mean, I don't know how many of you guys in the chat have seen the, the latest overlap, the one where Adam McCall is losing his shit and looks like he's about to burst into tears. But Big Steve puts it plainly like, Are you a liar? No. Do you know what's going on? No. Well, there's not much to talk about then, then there is there. And then past that, like, international breaks are so boring. I'm, I'm like you. The first couple of days, it was like, oh, nice, a break. And then you kind of realise, now what do I do? Like, there's no football on. Um, I don't particularly enjoy watching my country play football at the moment. Um, and, yeah, club football, I miss it. I mean, I lost track of days. This, this is what happens to me in the international break. I lose track of what day it is. I, I get mixed up. It, it it throws me through a loop. So I can't wait for it to come back personally. But I mean, we've got to sit through some more international fixtures, don't we? Unfortunately, that's just what that's, that's just how it is. I can't wait for tournament football. When it comes to international stuff, I'm all over the tournament stuff. I love it. I love all the fanfare and all the the fancy shit. But these, especially when it's friendlies, because qualifiers they mean something at least. But when it's friendlies, I could okay. I could do without it. I don't care. I just don't care, mate. Lads, there's 40, there's 50 people in the building now, and we're on 18 likes, man. Come on, smash the likes, man. Get the likes up. Let's get, let's get to 50 in a record time during an international break. How sick would that be? Let's smash those likes, man. Um, because <laughs> we, we want to keep streaming, we want to keep talking, but like I said, there's not a huge amount to talk about. Uh, the likes are free, exactly. Adam McCola is one hell of a C star star T. Adam McCola. Um... I've never met Adam McCola. I don't know him personally. I've never worked with him. I, I, I do rate some of his content. I, I do like some of his content. I, I think in some ways he, he comes across okay. But I thought the way he handled himself on that overlap with Big Steve was just childish. It was just like a, a ratty child, an upset child. And he came across, literally, you know when we say as City fans that Man City are your club's biggest excuse for failure and Man City are ruining your life right now. That's what he he exuded. He exuded just you're gonna when you get done for cheating and come on, you know you're cheating. Come on, you know you've you've, you've done this. No. Sorry, Adam McCullough, mate. Are you a lawyer? Have you gone to law school? Can I see your degree? Are you involved in the case? The answer to all those things is no, so I'm going to tell you to shut the fuck up. Because look, I had the right to say that because me, throughout this whole process of 115, I have been open, I've been honest, and I've been the same, consistent with you lot. Anybody who watches me since those charges came in, you know I've been consistent about the whole thing. I've always said, I know sweet fuck all. I know nothing. So you know nothing. 
All I know is what my club said, is that we have irrefutable evidence, and all I know is that the Premier League have charged us 115 times. Anything beyond that, I don't know. So neither do you, mate. So don't start saying, come on, you know you've been cooking the books, come on, you know you've been cheating. I thought Big Steve handled it very well. I thought Big Steve handled it very well, um, in all fairness. Um, it was an obvious segment, Joe, that was going to come up in that uh, overlap, wasn't it? It's an obvious thing. I've noticed since the, these charges came out, Joe, that way back in February now, so you're talking 13, 14 odd months, that 115 content people, it bangs. It bangs. If I wanted to milk money out of all of you, if I wanted to be, if me and Joe wanted to be dickheads, yeah, and just be money men and be greedy, we'd sit here all day, every day, talking about 115, getting people on about 115, going through all the conspiracies about, conspiracies about 115, trying to make you panic, trying to make you calm, trying to go through all the emotions so you lot all click in, you watch me and Joe, and that's great. But the reality is what I said five minutes ago, none of us have a fucking rashers. None of us have a fucking clue. It's become such a popular thing to do. It's a non-stop talk about Man City and charges. No one ever wants to come onto a show and go, you know what? I don't want to talk about charges, but I'll give City credit. They're a fantastic football team. Because those 23-odd players who won the treble, those 23-odd players who won three in a row, those 23-odd players, the managers, the coaches, on a footballing level, all did a magnificent job. Everyone wants to go there, cheating little fuckers. That's not the content that I want to be involved in. That's not what I want to talk about. Me and Joe didn't start this channel a few years ago to talk about legalities and regulations. We want to talk about football. We want to criticize. We want to praise. We want to analyze as fans. None of us claim to be geniuses uh, when it comes to the legalities or regulations. And neither of us claim to be geniuses when it comes to football. But it's much more lighthearted with football, isn't it? Because a lot of it's subjective. You can say what you want. You can, you can debate. You can have laughs. You can... A bit of personality. That's what we like to do. But if you want to start telling me to come on, you know you've cooked the books. Come on. I'll tell you to come on and fuck off. Because you haven't a clue. And you pumping this up non-stop. Saying you've cooked the books. You've cooked the books. You've cooked the books. You're the one going to look like the biggest dickhead of all time. If City get off it. Innocent. Do you know what I'm saying? All these people, they're milking their cash right now. They're generating their cash, making 115 content, but they're going to look like the biggest wank stains on the internet if City get off scot free. So all of a sudden, all of your credibility is gone. All of your credibility is gone. You claimed you knew this, you claimed you knew that. If it all comes crashing down, then what? You were wrong about something really serious. It's not wrong about. ITK transfer news or wrong about predicted 11s. You're wrong about a, a, a court situation, legalities, the reputation and integrity of a club. Hmm. Hmm. And they're still going to make money afterwards as well. Because if, say, I mean, both sides, you look at both sides, say we do get proven guilty, they're going to milk the whole cheating thing forever. They're going to milk it every time we come up in conversation. It's going to be cheats, cheats, cheats. And then you flip it the other way. We get proven innocent and we get no sanctions or maybe minor sanctions, maybe a fine, I don't know. They're all going to lose it and they're still going to make content. So it's a win-win either way. They know what they're doing. It's smart. I get, like, I get why they make content on it, but it is boring because apart from here in the number 115, how many of these, you know... I mean, they're all rivals, pretty much, but how many of these people that you've heard talk about this have actually spread light onto this? How many of them have actually given you a piece of information that you didn't know beforehand and that nobody knew beforehand? How many times are these people giving you an insight into what's going on? How many times, you know, the best I've heard, and now you have to listen to TalkSport, which is unfortunate, but Stefan, He's yeah, been yeah, like yeah. he has been the best guy at explaining this thing. He's gone on about our situation. Sure. He's gone on about our situation, Chelsea's situation. I think he also touched on Forest and Everton as well. He knows what he's talking about. So if you want to get into these boring, you know, legal situations, if you want to know things, then you're gonna to listen to that. But like you said before, football is a game of opinions. It's quite easy to talk about a game of football. Because all you need is an opinion. Whether somebody thinks it's right or wrong, there truly is no right or wrong answer. 
You know what I mean? Like the perfect example we spoke about this multiple times is something like Pakai Osaka. Is he world class? Is he not? Some people will argue yes. Some people will argue no. There's no right answer. There's no there's yeah. no one who can tell you there's a right or wrong answer. But with a legal situation like this that is going to court and that is right. very yeah. fine details and you know big ramifications if it goes wrong, there is a right and a wrong answer. And some people are going to be wrong. I won't be wrong. I won't be wrong. You won't be wrong. Because neither of us have come on to any show and said, we know for a fact that City have done nothing wrong. So I'm going to be able to come on here and either call dickheads out or else say, right, let's talk about the club and where we went wrong. Listen, there's nearly 75 people in the building, which is sick. The record time in which we've hit 50 likes before, I think is 17 minutes. And we're 15 likes off and we've three minutes to hit that. So if 15 of you hit the like button right now, we can break the record for how fast we've hit 50 likes. So hit that like button, man. Hit that like button and uh, subscribe. And there's a link in the chat if you want to be a channel member. I'm all about... Look, I, I, I love making content on YouTube. I love collaborating with people. I love having discussions, debates about subjective things, about real things, whatever. But what I will never do to you guys is lie. To you guys, all, there's over 7,000 subscribers on this channel. There's over 70 of you in the building right now. I will never come on here and lie to you people. Because I don't think you're a pack of dickheads. I have respect for you lot. I'm not going to come on here and lie to your faces. You're watching me live right now. I'm not going to lie to your faces and start filling you full of information so that you'll super chat, so that you'll, you'll, you'll uh, give me views, so that you'll give me money. No, I will always, always, always be open and honest with you. And I've been like that since the beginning of this 115 thing. I've never, ever claimed to be in the know. Now, there's people, there's people like, I, I, and I'll always call them out. Mark Albridge, that Anfield Agenda guy, that Adam McCullough guy, acting and claiming like they actually know what's going on. Now, some of these guys may have huge channels. 500,000, 1 million, 2 million subscribers. And you may get it into your head that, oh, these guys have huge channels. Maybe they have connections in the industry. Maybe they know what's going on. They're the exact same as me and Joe, just with more views and more subscribers. They know no more than me and Joe. They know no more than me and you. But they'll come on because they've got big platforms and say, I've seen the emails. That's a quote. That's an actual quote from Craig from Anfield Agenda. I've seen the emails. I've seen the emails. Dirty, disgusting club, yada, yada, yada. Mate, you haven't a fucking clue. You're sitting in Dublin. I sit in Dublin. I'm in Dublin streaming right now. You sit in Dublin moaning about Liverpool for views. And you know that 115 is a view farm. So you're going to say you've seen the emails. You know this, you know that. Mark Goldbridge knows every time he makes a stream with Man City and Crisis in the title. Views, 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 views. These kind of people, they know what they're doing. They're not genuine. They're not authentic. They don't know any more than me and you. They're fake. They're liars. And they're doing it all for views and money. And I promise you, I promise you, I will be the first to do it. If, 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 if City get found innocent, I will be the first to do a stream calling all them out. I'll have all the receipts from everything they said. And I'll say, answer for that. Answer for that. Where did you get this? Where did you get that? Why did you feel you had the right to say this and that at that time, and now it's proven totally wrong? You should have kept your mouth shut. And vice versa, I'll stay consistent. If City are found guilty, I'll come on here live that day with Joe, and we'll go, right, who in our club has fucked up and cheated and made us guilty of this and that? I've been balanced, I've been honest, and I've been consistent. But what I ask of you people in the chat, anybody who's watching this on playback, do not click, do not watch, do not interact with these people because you're giving them exactly what they want. Every time they tweet about 115 and charges and you react in an angry way or tell them they're wrong, you're giving them what they want. Engagement farming. Every time they post a video, Man City in Crisis, and you comment or you, you react or you even just view it, you're giving them what they want. Absolute utter wafflers of the highest order. And so many of them, so many of them will be found out over time. I promise you. I promise you. <laughs> Fucking jarring people, man. Jarring, jarring people. Listen, that's that segment. I'm going to park that there because I'm not even going to give it any more airtime. It's rubbish. Absolute rubbish. Imagine that. People with fan channels. 
People with fan channels acting like they know what's going on in one of the highest profile sporting legal cases of all time. How much of a dickhead do you think I am? How much of a dickhead do you think your viewers are to try and make us believe you know what's going on? Get out of here. Get out of here. Rubbish, man. Rubbish. We're going to park that there because... <laughs> look, He's going to lose I his wanna... head if we carry on. I, no, I'm not going to lose my head, but it's a segment that I wanted to do and I wanted to do quickly because during the international break, so much of that shit comes out. They know there's no football, there's no real transfer talk. What can I do that's going to keep my views and my money consistent? I'll bang on City. I'll, 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 I'll slander City. I'll accuse City. I'll keep the, the City hating brigade going on. And it's easy content. And I'm sick of people using my club for easy content. Rubbish. We'll park it there. We'll park it there, chat, right? We'll park it there. I promise you. I'm, I, I said at the top of the stream that the 115 stuff gets easy views. It does. It does. And I'm not going to buy into it. Until something serious comes out, until something worth talking comes out, that's me. I'm done with it now. I've given you my two pence. Joe's giving you his two pence. I believe Sidir. I believe Sidir innocent because the club says we're innocent. When it happens, it happens. We will be there. We will be there. Now, let's move on to the football stuff that I actually like talking about. Injuries, football, matches coming up. The, the real shit that me, you, Joe, everybody in the chat, what we're actually into, what we're actually interested in. We're football fans, we're City fans, we're support whoever else. So, um, quick round of applause, Joe. We've smashed the, the likes. 50 likes, 50 likes. Over 80 in the building. Make sure you've subscribed. Make sure you've hit the like button. Um, there's a link in the chat there. If you want to be a channel member, the option is there. No, no pressure, no pressure. Let's start with the injury list, Joe. Because um, I see a bit of panicking. I see a bit of panicking regarding injuries. Obviously, Kyle Walker went off injured for England against Brazil. We've had Diaz and Bernardo leave the Portugal camp. We've had Rodri with a family issue pull out of the Spain camp. We've had lots of things. What do you do? Do you think? Do you think that, that that this is anything serious, or we're doing what we think we're doing, which is preparing for Arsenal? Fifty-fifty. Well, maybe not. Seventy-thirty. The Bernardo and Diaz coming back from Portugal after one game—that's a hundred percent them looking at Arsenal. Uh, the, 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 there's nothing else to that. They're not injured. They just left camp early. The Rodri thing. I don't think he's left the camp entirely. I just think he was missing from a training session. So he'll probably play whenever Spain play next. Um, as for Walker, I think that's the only one where it is an injury. Like, I think that one is an injury. I don't think that's him going, yeah, I want to get back to play for Arsenal. Of course, he'll, he'll try everything in his power to be available for that game. But I think there is an actual genuine injury um, in that one. Because he tried to run it off. He tried to keep going. And he couldn't. So, in in regards to Walker, I think he actually is injured. How bad it is, still nobody has any clue. But as for anybody else who's pulled out of their national team, it, it's one hundred percent. You know, Arsenal's around the corner. Look what Saka did. Saka went. You know, did a couple of days of the England camp. Decided, nah, not for me. I'll save myself. Just, just on, on Kyle Walker, I'm going to deviate slightly from the, from the injuries thing. Over 90 in the building. That's absolutely crazy. We have, <laughs> well, are you guys all bored during the international break as much as us? There's 92 in the building. <laughs> just hit the like button. Hit the like button. Welcome. Um, on the Walker thing, he's been getting on my nerves a little bit. And I don't know, is he getting on my nerves justifiably or just, justifiably or not? I don't know what the word is. Justified, justifiably or not? The podcasts, the interviews, the, the everything oh, he's God. doing. Does anybody else in the chat feel a bit weird about Kyle Walker going on Rio Ferdinand's podcast? Yes. He's doing like, so much talking this season. He just needs to can it. He's had about five interviews in a newspaper article. He needs to just stop. Like, is it normal? Is it normal that the Man City captain is going on Rio Ferdinand's podcast, the Man United legend, this podcast. I wouldn't really care if Walker was retired or Walker wasn't playing for City anymore. But, mate, you're the Man City captain. Why are you mid-season going on Rio Ferdinand's podcast? It just, it, it, it doesn't sit right with me for some reason. It doesn't sit right with me. Now, look, you can, if you think I'm being 
over the top here and I'm being hypercritical. People say it. Say, Hugh, you're being hypercritical. You're being a dickhead. He can go on the podcast if he wants. But I saw and I, I watched both parts. Part two came out yesterday, I think. I watched part two today and I watched part one when it came out. They ask him a lot of like heavy questions. Do you know what I mean? They ask him like his opinions, his thoughts on, on it's not your run of the mill like, oh, uh, how's training going? And oh, how's, uh, how's life? How are you getting on? Blah, blah, blah. They ask him like real questions, serious questions about like who's better, Sack or Foden. Now this these are gonna be controversial things. He may not be he may not be thinking it too seriously when he's there, but like do you need to be answering these questions for Rio fucking Ferdinand? Do you need to be going on Rio Ferdinand's podcast? Is like is he paying you a huge amount of money? Is it something that like, like why? Like, why, why? Go on City Extra or something. Go on, if you want to do something like that, go on a City podcast, City Report, City Extra, whatever. Why do Rio Ferdinand, a Man United legend, that dickhead Housen sitting there, and he's another knobhead, Stephen Housen, why sit down with them? It just, do you know what I'm saying, chat? Joe? Mm. It's, it's, just it's, gotten on my, it's gotten on my tits this season, the amount of times I've, seen a notification and it's a quote from Kyle Walker doing some sort of interview. He just needs to focus on his football. His form as of recent has picked up, but do you remember at the start of the season? Oh my god, he was completely useless. Like he looked so out of it. And everybody was saying he needs to be dropped. He needs to run out of the team. He's not playing well. He's not in a role that suits him. All of this stuff. And he's doing interviews left, right and centre. He's got a column in the sun. He's going speaking to Rio Ferdinand and doing all sorts of other interviews, answering just pointless questions. Just focus on your foot. You're the captain. Focus on your football. You know, That's you're not the captain for no though. reason. Just focus on your football. We've got a big game against Arsenal, top of the table clash. We need to win that game, not draw. We need to win that game. Real Madrid around the corner. We know Vinicius is going to start on the left. We know that that's a battle that you look forward to. You played against him for England. You got injured. You played against him last season. You did pretty well. Focus on your foot, but you're the captain. I don't need the captain being distracted by going and speaking to Rio Ferdinand, especially considering the questions. If that's, um, I mean, that question, who's better at Saka or Foden right before the Arsenal game? Are you joking? Yeah. Are you joking? Not a time. Yeah. Not the time. This is the running. Focus. You're the captain. If he wasn't the captain, I don't think it's as big a deal. Yes, it's bad because he still needs to, like, you know, focus on what's in front of him. But he's the captain. He's the leader. He's the senior figure. He's the club captain. Over over 110 people in the building, guys. Make sure you hit the like button. These numbers are crazy. <laughs> welcome, 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 everybody. Make sure you get your thoughts in. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure if you want to be a channel member, the link's in the chat. I mean, Briggsy posts a good question in the chat here. Did Vinny Company do this many interviews in one season? Now, look, the answer is no, obviously. But I don't believe in comparing every captain we've ever had and saying they should all be the exact same. But I do think there is a, a ceiling on what they can and can't do. I think there's more responsibility, PR-wise and publicity-wise, on the captain of a football club than there is in everybody else. Now, that's not saying the rest of the players should be given license to go and do whatever the hell they want. Um, but I do think a captain should behave s slightly more you know, strict than everybody else. Because look, you you are the captain of the football club. You are captain of the European champions, the world champions, the Premier League champions. And I, I just, like, Gundogan never did this, Company never did this. And I know De Bruyne wouldn't do this if he was captain. He wouldn't. Diaz wouldn't. I don't know what it is with Walker. I mean, look, if Walker was absolutely smashing it this season and he was the model captain, and he was playing 10 out of 10 every game, or even 7 out of 10 every game, I'd say, fuck it, whatever, look, it, it doesn't sit well with me, but he's playing well, so I'm not gonna, I'm not really gonna, gonna win on too, um, go in on him too much. But Walker's not had a great season. He's had good games, he's been, had good little periods, but he's not had a great season. And as you say, he's spending a lot of time giving quotes, doing interviews. He chose the son of all papers to give his interview, or to get off his chest, his his marital issues, and whatever. I just, the Rio Ferdinand one and Stephen Housen, I was like, why? Why? I've no issue with, with the players and, and Kyle Walker doing, like, the, the PR interviews. Like, uh, I saw Phil Foden did one 
recently with Cernucci, the, the jewelry band. And that's grand because it's all like it's planned what's going to be asked and it's planned how he's going to answer. He can be as boring as he likes. He's getting his bag. He's doing his contract uh, and he's moving on. You don't need to go on Rio Ferdinand's podcast. You're not Jermaine Genus. You're not Ian Wright. You're not Alan Shearer. You know, all past players who, who are now free to do whatever the hell they want. You're the captain of Manchester City Football Club and you're sitting in a studio in Manchester with Rio Ferdinand, Stephen Housen and some other guy. And the other guy, I don't know, I don't know, actually know his name, excuse me for not knowing his name, he spends half the fucking podcast telling Kyle Walker how class Arsenal are and what Arsenal are going to do to Man City this season. What benefit is that to Kyle Walker? Listen to some Arsenal guy, fan, telling Kyle Walker what Arsenal are going to do to Man City this season. He's like, yeah, we've got something for you. We're coming for you this season. We're much better this season. Why the fuck are you sitting there talking to him? Do you know what I mean? That's like me sitting down with Declan Rice and going, tell you what, Declan, mate, we've got something for you this season. We're going to smash you up this season. Declan Rice don't need that. Do you know what I mean? He doesn't need to sit down with me. Same with Carl Walker, doesn't need to sit down with that guy. Or Stephen Housen. Oh, man, I just... (laughs) I love Carl Walker, and I really appreciate Carl Walker and how good he's been um, since he arrived at the club, but he's not doing himself any favours this season in terms of... Like, look, I'm sure plenty of you will be sitting there going, Hugh, you are a dickhead. There's no need to complain. Why are you giving out? And you know what? In many ways, you're probably right. But at the same time, I will speak my mind. <laughs> and I was watching the podcast because Kyle Walker, and I was listening to the questions they're asking, and I could, I could visibly see in Walker's face whenever they'd ask a question that he knew was a tricky question, you could visibly see in his face, he's like, oh, fuck, how do I, how do I tiptoe around this? Why, you know, how do I answer this without getting in trouble? Um, and so on and so forth. Like, they asked him, where should Phil Foden play to, to do the most damage for England? That's Kyle Walker about to tell Rio Ferdinand and all his viewers what Garrett Southgate should be doing. Now, whatever you think about Garrett Southgate, it's up to you. But Garrett Southgate's not going to appreciate Kyle Walker giving Rio Ferdinand and everybody else tactical advice on how to run his team. So, as I say, you can see Walker's face visibly like, oh, how do I answer this? You put yourself in that situation. <laughs> it, <laughs> it doesn't... Uh, I don't know, Joe. It just doesn't sit well with me. No, because <clears throat> it's, it's the type of questions. He knows... You, I mean, surely he's done his research onto this Rio Ferdinand podcast. Of course he's going to ask these questions. He wants clicks. He's an influencer now, Rio Ferdinand. He wants clicks. He's going to ask the hard questions. I mean, no, he should know this. So if he sat there struggling through some of the harder questions, why bother? Because you knew it was going to happen. And then the same thing, there's, like you said, with the, the Arsenal fans sat there telling him that they're so much better than us and they've got something for us and all that. There is no benefit, but there is definitely a potential downside. There is 100% a potential downside, because if you start giving it chest and it blows up in your face, you look like an idiot. Yeah. It's... um. I just, I just don't think it was necessary. I just don't think he needed to do that. And I mean, look, he, he's human, and, and and in many ways, he's entitled to do these kind of things if he wants. I just don't think it's necessary. And as you say, you know, Rio Ferdinand's an influencer, and so on and so forth. Rio Ferdinand has openly admitted in the last few months that he says things on his podcast for clicks. Like, what was the one he said recently? Um, Something maybe something about Klopp or Liverpool versus United or something like that. He said oh, I something. Th- I think it was no. He said one recently, I think, and it was something to do with Arteta would go and join yes. United. Yes, yes, yes. That's exactly it. He said on his podcast that if United came knocking for Mikel Arteta right now, he'd leave Arsenal straight away and go to Manchester United. Obviously, a ludicrous statement. He was pressured about it, and he openly admitted eventually that he said it just for content, for clicks. And look. Do your thing. Wouldn't be me, but do your thing. So, what, Kyle, why are you going on a podcast with a guy who openly does things for clicks and to get clips? He wants to clip you up. Do you know what I mean? He, he's bringing you on to clip you up. It just, mm, it, it was, a, it was a, a funny choice, a funny choice. Uh, 115 of you guys in the building, absolute legends. One, welcome, one, welcome. 115. One, 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 of We're you back. in the we've building. Gone, we've gone in a circle. <laughs> 
Briggsy and Bree, put the 115 emoji in the chat. Uh, Joe <laughs> made really cool custom 115 emojis. If you want access to use those emojis, become a channel member for three ninety nine. Um, you're just helping support me and Joe, and you get it. I'm gonna make you a channel moderator as well as a token of appreciation. Big up, big up, everybody who's here. Free to do though. Hit the like button. Yeah, one one five in the building right now. That's mad. <laughs> hit the like button. Subscribe if you are new around here. And um, there we go, Briggsy and Bree with the one one five emojis. You get them if you're a channel member, and they're both moderators as well because they are channel members. Right. Let's keep it moving. Um. Oh, I was going to talk about this thing about Eddie had, but it, it's very much related to 115, isn't it? And I've already gone over 115 enough on how much I hate talking about it. So I don't, I don't think I will. I don't think I will. Are you worried for this Arsenal game on Sunday? Because I, I kind of feel with these international breaks as... Because, look, when there's not an international break and the games are rolling every three, four days, you don't get time to get like nervous and get worried about these big games because they just come thick and fast. Whereas an international break gives you time to start to kind of go, oh, well, I'm not sure about this, and I'm hearing this, and I don't like this, I do like that. I remember the international break last season. Remember Haaland got injured before the international break, and we were playing Liverpool. He didn't ultimately play. We beat them 4-1, so on and so forth. Chat, get involved in this as well, and Joe, give me your answer. How Is, is this a must-win game? Is this? I'll give you my answer after. Is this Arsenal game must-win? Because if we lose this, Arsenal go four points clear. Uh, Liverpool have a chance to go. I think it's four clear as well. Um, and it makes things a bit tricky for us. You're then relying on a few slip-ups from both of our direct challengers. Well, I'll answer you both your questions, but in terms of the first one, is it a must-win? Yes. Yes, it is. 100% it's a must-win. I don't know how anyone can see it as any other way. I feel like the the talk going into Liverpool it was a must-not-lose because you lose, you fall four points behind them, and then it becomes a little bit, you know, of a sticky situation. Whereas a draw against Liverpool still kept us within touching distance. It still kept us within a point. You know, a win was ideal, but a draw wasn't the end of the world. A draw here potentially is still, like, really, really bad, because if we draw, Liverpool could go three points clear. And then three points, they have a better goal difference than we do. So, you know, logic tends to suggest, or suggest to me at least anyway, that, you know, being three points behind and having a worse goal difference, we're still relying on them to have two slip-ups. In, in my eyes, in my opinion, still relying on a couple of slip-ups. So it's no better than losing and being four mm -hmm. points behind. We're still in a similar situation. So for me, it's a must-win. We have to win the game just not only to, to go above Arsenal, and make it so that, you know, they're behind us again, but to not lose ground to Liverpool, to make it really, really close, because, you know, we need to be able to capitalise if they slip up. If we draw or lose to Arsenal and Liverpool go three or four points clear, there's n there might be a situation where even if they do drop points, there's no, like, we can't capitalise on it because we'd still be behind. You know, so it, for me, it's a must-win game, but you asked me in the last stream as well, you know, am I worried? And I said, I'm not worried. I don't get worried in the build-up to a game. Maybe once the game kicks off, I might be shitting myself a little bit. But I'm not worried in the build-up to the game. But I'm not sat here like I was last season going, we're going to smash these. I'm not. I'm, I'm slightly on edge. I think that was the word that I used last time. I'm on edge. I don't know which way this game is going to go. It depends how we turn up. At the end of the day, that's that's just what it boils down to. Are we going to turn up like we did, you know, against Chelsea twice? Um, we're going to turn up like we did against Liverpool at Anfield. If we do that, we'll get smashed. I've, I've, I've no doubt about that. If we turn up like that, we we'll, we'll probably won't get anything from the game. Maybe a draw. But if we turn up and play like we did that Newcastle game just before the break, we totally dominate that game. If we play close to that, you know, with a a full team, then I I give us a really good chance at home. There's uh, 120 in the building. We're 20 likes off 100. I don't remember the last time we hit 100 likes on a stream. So if 20 of you could hit the like button and get it up to 100, I will be forever in debt. <laughs> I am... Arsenal, look, Arsenal haven't come to the Etihad and won since, I want to say, 2015. It's like, we're, we're talking around the decade mark since they last came to the Etihad and won. So, you know, but by nature... They should not be coming to the Etihad and beating us. 
as the treble winners, as the team that should be stamping our authority on them. It's up to us right now as the most successful team in the world as of right now, you know, currently, most recently, most successful team in the world, to stamp our authority and not let any newcomers come in. If Arsenal come to the Etihad and beat us, it is a massive, massive turning of the tide. And I would be very, very concerned about the momentum Arsenal will take for that moving forward. I'll be very concerned about Liverpool and what they will take. Like Liverpool will be watching this game with, you know, like Hawks, be saying, let's look at City, let's look at City. Because if we lose, there's already an air of inevitability around Liverpool right now. We do not want to be giving them any more momentum, any more fuel with everything going on with them right now. But like I said, I'm anxious. I'm not, I'm not nervous like, oh no, I'm afraid Arsenal are going to come up to the Eddie had and absolutely batter us. I'm anxious because I think the performance against Arsenal and the manner in which we hopefully beat Arsenal, it's going to set the tone for this run-in. We're now coming into April. The 31st of March is the Arsenal game. So April and May is the two crucial, crucial months as to what decides whether you win any trophies or not. So I think beat Arsenal, you're setting a great tone for Wembley against Chelsea, both games against Real Madrid. Because you beat Arsenal, three days later we got Villa. That's no easy task. I would be concerned about dropping points to Arsenal how we turn out against Villa because it's a massive, massive scalp. It's a massive, massive blow for us to take moving forward in these last two months. Our big six record this season is atrocious. It's brutal. I think the only, the only big six team we've beaten in the league... United. United. We, we the rest, the we rest are draws and the only loss... We've only got one loss, but against Arsenal, the Emirates. But the rest are draws. Draws. Yeah, yeah, you, that that's not good. <laughs> that's not good. Like your your big six games are your crucial games. We, we all know that. They're they're the games that you need to get the better of if you want to win a league. So the fact that we're still very much in the mix for the league with a pretty crap big six record, head to head record, it's good. But now it's at the point where look, you gotta win this game. You gotta win this big six game because it's neck and neck. Look, we don't even know who's fucking available, do we? Like, I mean, I don't know about you guys, chat, but um, I need Jack Grealish back, man. I need, need, need Jack Grealish for this run. And look, Jack's not been available for large parts of the season. He wasn't selected for parts of the season. It is what it is. I'm a firm believer that if we want to win one, two, maybe three trophies between now and the end of the season, we need, need, need Jack Grealish. I think there's a huge amount of unbalance when he's not in the pitch. I think there's too much predictability. I think we give up possession too easily and we're too easy to hit on transition. I need, need, need Jack Grealish. Erling Haaland obviously is grand, so he should play against Arsenal. De Bruyne, we don't even know about De Bruyne's um, injury update. Obviously, he didn't play in the Newcastle game before the international break. We don't know how he's doing. Diaz and Bernardo both left the Portugal camp. I don't know how they are. Rodri obviously did his thing with his family, so he should be fine. Um, and then Kyle Walker, we don't know. Going back to Kyle Walker, does his injury concern you, chat and Joe? Because there's a part of me says, you know what? I'm pretty cool with Akanji. I'm pretty cool with John Stones. I'm pretty cool with the four center half setup. But then again, I, I, I do look at Kyle Walker and go, you'd be massive, massive, massive for us in run-ins. So if Walker was to be, like I got a message off someone on Twitter there an hour ago saying he's heard Kyle Walker is actually not okay. Now, I don't know, is that true or not? I actually have no idea, is that true or not? But if that was to be true, would you be kind of going, damn? Maybe a little for Madrid more than anything, because... Say for Arsenal, say for Arsenal. No, absolutely not. No. Look at the performances Akanji's put in. He's been unreal when he's played. He's been one of the mm. best players on the pitch every time he's played since he's come back from his injury. So no, for, if Kyle Walker is not available for Arsenal, it does not knock my confidence one bit. In fact, it might make me slightly more confident because I don't know which Kyle Walker is going to turn up this season. I really don't. I don't know whether it's going to be the, the the lazy not running back or flying forward and you know flying crosses in a million miles an hour. Or I don't know if it's going to be the staying back defensively side Kyle Walker. I don't know. With Akanji, he's going to sit there, play as a right fullback, defensive, do his defensive job, sit there, defend well. He's going to play well because he's played well. I know what I'm getting from Akanji. So no, it doesn't knock my confidence one bit. I will 
again, go back to my original point of the thing why it may make me a little bit more on edge for Madrid is because I've seen Kyle Walker deal with Vinicius. I've seen that. I know he can do that. Does, does this season's version of Kyle Walker still give you the same confidence that the Kyle Walker we've seen against Vicious, Vinicius Jr. did? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think we can both agree Kyle Walker has not been the Kyle Walker of always this season through one reason or another. Does it? Are you still going to the Bernabeu on the 9th of April and saying it has to be Kyle Walker? I'd prefer it, but I'm I'm not as confident as I was in him last season because again of his performances, I'm not. It's not the same player in my eyes. Not because of any fall off, but because of just what I've seen this season. It's not the same player, but I know sort of what I'm getting with Kyle Walker. I've not seen a Kanji play against Vinicius. I don't know what that looks like. It's a bit of a. It's sort of a. Even though Kyle Walker's a bit patchy. At least it's kind of a known quantity with the kanji. Yeah, he might do all right, but he, he might also get rinsed. You just never know um, because he's not done it before. So it, it's kind of a 50-50, but I guess it doesn't It doesn't really shake me too much. It really doesn't shake me too much with the Walker injury. I, I don't think he's desperately needed. I really don't think he's desperately needed. I think that whoever plays in that position, be it Stones or my choice being a kanji, because, I mean, in my opinion the way you get the best out of a Kanji is, and it's really weird considering he's a centre-half, but he's better at dealing with the wider areas, the channels, defensively, than he is the central areas of the pitch. In my opinion, he is. He's, he's quick, he's strong, he can match wingers for pace a lot of the time. I think he's better defending in a wider position. So for me, when he starts at right-back, no problems. No problems for me at all. Mm. Mm, it's an interesting one. Um, for the first time since we've rebooted this channel and myself and Joe stream daily, we're about to do our second round of applause of the evening for you guys in the chat. Our second. So the way it works around here is every 50 likes on the stream, we give you guys a round of applause as a thank you for hitting that like. We have not hit 100 likes um, since myself and Joe started streaming again regularly, and we've just hit 100 likes for the first time. So... That's the second round of applause for the evening for you guys. Massive, massive thank you to each and every single one of you for getting 100 likes and subscribing. And Martin has sent a super chat here. Big up, Martin. I'm going to read it out now. But I just wanted to highlight that as a thank you because we do massively appreciate each and every single one of you. Uh, big up, Martin. He says, if we play Jack, are you leaving Kovacic out? Big up, lads. It's a really tough one because Kovacic has actually been really, really good, um, I, I think, in the last few months. And... He might have started off a little bit shaky earlier on the season or he wasn't getting the game time, um, but he's been pretty good when called upon of recent. I don't know, Joe. How do you navigate that one? Just look at Anfield when he came on. We got control back. If you want to... If you want to have more control in the game, if you want to... And again, this, this gets perceived as boring. Remember last season when it was just boring because it was Grealish on one side, Bernardo on the other. It was sideways, backwards. Control, control, control. Bore teams to death. F fuck it, it works, doesn't it? I want to treble. So if you want to have more control in a game, if you want to take charge of a game, if you want to have a better chance of winning, so what if it looks a bit boring? Kovacic plays. Now, the, obviously, the one other side is you look at the... The Arsenal game with the Emirates in the league, and he should have been sent off twice. Um, that can't happen. We can't have that Kovacic playing again. We can't have that reckless sliding in on a yellow card. Probably should have been sent off straight red card. That, that can't happen. But the way I look at it is when he played against Newcastle, of course, he played in the sixth row a little bit there. So, you know, him sitting next to Rodri gives us control. You add Grealish into that mix. The amount of control you're going to have. You know, it ups our chance of winning. It does. That's that's why Grealish is so important. Because he's not a flair player. He's not flashy. He doesn't get in the highlight reels. But he increases your chances of winning. That's a fact. But what, why, why do you have to drop Kovacic to bring in Grealish, though? Why can't you play both? You don't. You don't. You don't. I think, I think the, the thinking there is, you look at... Rodri's obviously going to be starting in the Holly midfield role. We know that. But you've got four positions, apart from Haaland up front where you've got Bernardo Silva, Kovacic, Foden, Grealish, De Bruyne. That's five players. Who mm -hmm. misses out? I think that's what Martin's trying to say. Who misses out? 
Because you can't play all five of them. It's impossible. You just can't do it. And you're not going to drop Foden, so he's going to be in there. That's one. If De Bruyne's fit, do you play him? Because I've seen a few things on Twitter, and I, I'm going to be honest, I don't totally disagree with, because his last two games haven't been good and he keeps getting injured. I've seen a few people saying that maybe for a little bit, impact sub. Impact sub. Because he keeps getting mm. injured. And it's I don't think he can play 90 minutes at the intensity he used to, or at least not yet. So I've seen we a few can't. suggestions. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So I've seen a few suggestions that maybe try him as an impact sub, because you saw what happened against Newcastle, St. James's Park. He played 20 minutes, turned the game around. Because he's a moments player. He will win you a game of football, but then you look at Man United at home and Liverpool away. He got taken off against Liverpool. He was playing that poorly. He was giving the ball away that he got taken off. So... It's a real dilemma of can he play 90 minutes at a high intensity? Because Arsenal are going to play at a high intensity. We know that. So can he match that for 90 minutes? If not, do you bring him off the bench so we can match it for, you know, 40? Mm. It's a difficult one. It's a difficult, cause my, my, instinct, my instinct tells me that if Kev's fit, Kev plays. But I, I do actually see where you're coming from. So it's a difficult one. I mean, Martin, let me know what you would do. Let, let me know what you would do. Um, because I'm interested. And, and chat, get involved as well. Uh, big up Martin as well on the charity stream he did the other, the other day. Apologies, I couldn't make it on, but I did send a couple of donations. Uh, fantastic cause, fantastic work from Martin and everybody involved. Um, raising money for, I think it was an Alzheimer's charity, which is a charity very close to Martin's heart. So big up to everybody in the Mancunian way on that one. Um, Bree asked in the chat a couple minutes. The chat's flying, which is which is great to see so many of you here. Like I said, just keep hitting the likes. It's free to do, man. Keep hitting the likes. Uh, Bree asked, "Who are you dropping if not Kovacic?" See, it's so tough. Right, let let's do this. Let's do this, chat. There's 160 of you here. The biggest numbers we've had in a long, long time. Just hit the like button, and I want you all to get involved. Pending everyone's fit, what is our starting eleven for Arsenal? Yeah, let's do it. Why not? International break. Ederson obviously starts. Let's move into the back four. Already it's getting tricky. Who are you putting that right back? If it's up to me, I'm playing a kanji. I'm playing a kanji. Oh. Dropping Kyle Walker, yeah? Well, I'm playing a kanji. I think he's, mo- let's, he's, let's a more cons- he's a more consistent performer this season than Kyle Walker. That is my argument. Wow. <laughs> you can, okay, this you can say I'm a hater I've got an agenda I just no, don't know no, no, which no, Kyle no. Walker's gonna no. turn up man no no agenda no, we know there's no agenda centre backs Diaz Stones yeah standard Ake yeah Rodri yeah who are the two eights this is where right. it gets yeah, this yeah. is where it gets tricky man because I just spoke about bringing De Bruyne off the bench but he loves a game against Arsenal he loves he a goal against Arsenal. So I, I kind of have to agree with you. If he's fit, he starts. You can't drop him. You can't have him off the bench if he's fit. You just can't. It's, it's like unfathomable, I think is the word that I'm searching for. It's, like, it's crazy to suggest that. Like There is logic behind the suggestion of bringing him off the bench, but it's crazy. In a big game, title potentially on the line, you're going to say drop the Bayerner. So I, I, you have to play him. You have to play him. So he's one. I'm I'm trying to think of the other one because it's hard. I think it's I, Bernardo. I I I, I think it's Bernardo Silva there. I would do Bernardo Silva. De Bruyne, Bernardo. We can agree on that. Left Gre- wing. Grealish is, on, Grealish is on the left, hundred percent. I think everybody can agree on that. Grealish, Holland, Foden. Yeah, I mean, <sighs> it does mean Foden's playing off the right. Or would you, if you had it all your own way, you put Foden in the middle, Bernardo out in the right. But then I worry about the, the midfield slightly with Foden and De Bruyne as the two eights. Because obviously De Bruyne is going to be high next to Haaland because we don't want him running about in the middle of the park. Foden in the middle, I've not... He works hard. I've, some of the games that I've seen this season, it's the most I've ever seen him run. Like, he covers so much ground. But in terms of actual defensive work, like tackling and positioning, I haven't seen much of it. So I don't know. I don't know. Um... Is it a bit much to throw two tens to throw Foden and De Bruyne in the middle together against Arsenal? 
Is it a bit much? Is it a bit gung ho? A bit reckless? Why not? We're in our place. We're in our home stadium. Got to stamp our authority. Why not? And you're gonna have stones stepping in there anyway. So there's extra reinforcement. Yeah, if I had it my own way, I would. I'd put De Bruyne and Foden because I think De Bruyne's last couple of games, like I said, with the Liverpool and the United, he struggled in both of them. But I don't think he had much support. I think a lot of it was it was almost like seasons gone, where it was like you are the guy, make something happen. Because Foden was out on the uh, Foden was out touchline winger, doesn't suit him. So he didn't really have too much support there. Um, so yeah, if it was down to me, I'd do that. Because, I mean, if you're going to have a Kanji at right back, like I said, there's not a chance of him bombing on down the right and letting Foden tuck in. So, two controllers in the wide areas. It's basically going back to what worked last season. I mean, what, what did we do last season, which one was a treble? We had two controlling players in the wide positions. We had Stones next to Rodri. And we had, you know, centre-halves playing fullback. That was what won us a treble. So, I'm kind of just leaning towards doing that. And we don't have a Gundogan. Foden's a completely different player, but why not? It's a difficult one, man. It's a very, very difficult one. Um, <laughs> I think I know my team, but not everyone's not always going to agree. I see some people in the chat saying play Doku. I see Martin saying Foden on the left, Bernardo on the right. Uh, welcome back, AFC. It says one one five cheating scum. You'll be found out. There's another one of the people who knows exactly what's going on. Chat. Um, so listen to AFC because obviously he knows what's going on. Uh, make sure you've all hit the like button. Still 150 you've been in the building. Um, would you risk Jack Grealish? Uh, is the big question. Obviously, Jack has been spending the international break on his own at the CFA, doing his doing his own rehab, trying to get back to fitness. Whoo. Would I risk him? Because I think he's so, so important. I think he has to play against Real Madrid. I think he has to. Um, particularly at the burnabout for control. And I think he's crucial to... I mean, look, you got Tottenham away second last day of the season. You've got big games, man. Big, big games. Chelsea in the FA Cup. Would you risk him, Joe? Oh, it's a horrible question. There's so many horrible questions. I'm so glad I'm not a manager, man, because this shit is like, I couldn't deal with this, man. Because obviously the upside to playing him against Arsenal is, again, like, a, like I, I've been saying, and I'll keep saying, he will increase your chances of winning a game of football and decrease your chances of losing a game. But the 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 big red exclamation mark here that puts me off is the last two times that he has come back from an injury he's got injured within about 20 minutes and if he does it again he's probably going to be out for like the majority of the rest of the season or at least the most important part which is the next few weeks like he will not be fit for the burnabout if he gets injured against arsenal he just won't so i don't know man it's it's so hard because Ideal situation, he's fit, he starts both, but he's not. He's been injured twice, he's rehabbing. He seems to be okay, but the last two times that he seemed to be okay, he clearly wasn't. So, do you risk him? I mean, what are your other options? What, Doku? I don't think... I mean, when, the, when we went to the Emirates, I know it's away from home, but Doku did not play well against Arsenal last time out. He did not play well. He's um, not had a good game, I don't think, against any big six opposition, Doku. He came off the bench against United in Old Trafford, I believe, and did a decent job, but we'd already killed him at that point. To my knowledge, I don't think he's had a good game. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think he's had a good game this season against any big six opposition. No. I think he played really well against Newcastle, the last game that we had just before the break. I think that was probably yeah. one of his better performances this season. Which yeah. was weird because he was in he was in a fluid position. It was almost I want to say Jack Grealish esque because he wasn't on the left, was he? He was everywhere. He was in the middle. He was on the right. He was moving about really fluid, which yeah. is not something that would have although I would have thought would have suited him. So you know he's clearly growing into his role. But like you said, the the evidence is there. He doesn't play well against the top teams, or he hasn't done this season. Which it, it's fine. Like I get it. He's only young. He's still got loads to learn. He's learning a system. Um, he's learning... He, well, I mean, he's being asked to do things that are not his strengths. So I get it, but 
it's a big risk to to play Doku in that position. If you're not going to play Grealish, I think there are other options I'd consider first, Foden on the left being potentially one of them. If Nunes is fit, potentially another one as well. I've quite liked him in a wider area. Um, yeah. Because just evidence suggests Doku's probably not going to play well. I don't. I think if he plays off the left, he's going to struggle. He's going to struggle against Ben White. Like he, he just is. Um, because he's a defensive fullback. And he's not going to be able to rinse him. And it, you know, if he plays off the right, maybe he'd get a bit of joy if they were to play Zinchenko because he's not the greatest defensively. We know that. We watched him. But that's if he plays off the right. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about playing him off the left, which he'd be going up against Ben White. Do you back him? I don't. <laughs> to be honest, I don't. Two hundred percent. Oscar Bob. Oscar Bob's a good shout. Um, I'm a big, big fan of Oscar Bob. Did you see his goal for Norway the other day? It was so cold. He's unreal. I, I'd, I'd start him ahead of Doku against Arsenal. If, if there's a spot on the left, I think my, my, if it's not Grealish, my immediate thought is Foden because then you can get Kovacic into the middle next to De Bruyne, have Bernardo on the right, Foden on the left. I think that's the obvious one. I don't want to see none of this Alvarez playing on the wing or in midfield. I've had enough. It's I, I've it's taken years off my life expectancy. I've had enough. I don't want to see it anymore. So I think <laughs> for me, if obviously his first choice for me is Grealish, then I'd say it's Foden. Then I'd go Nunes, Bob, Doku. Okay. Okay, I like that. I like that. I like that. Um, we have one or two more things we want to talk about. It's a great stream, by the way. I'm really enjoying chatting to all of you guys and seeing what you guys have to say. I'm reading the chat and listening to Joe at the same time. There's a link in the chat there. Now Joe's going to put it in. If anybody wants to become a channel member like Bree and Briggsy, it's three ninety nine a month. You'll get a badge beside your name. We'll make you a channel moderator as a token of appreciation, and you'll get access to loads of cool emojis. And you're just helping out two blues, myself and Joe. So you can become a channel member. Link is there. Anybody wants to hit the like button. There's still 160 in the building, which is insane to me. There's 160 of you watching us right now. Hit the like button and subscribe if you're new. Um, the second last thing I want to talk about is um, it is Arsenal and not the match specifically. It's about how the title race is going to pan out. As a, as a community here, chat, we're going to make some predictions. Arsenal have it in their DNA. Now, of course, anybody can shake off. Um, issues in their DNAs, little, 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 you know, like we've had the Tottenham curse, we have an Anfield curse. Um, they have it in their DNA to bottle, you know, when it matters the most over the last 20 years to make a, a bollocks of things. Have Arsenal done enough this season to convince you that they're not going to do that this season? Or do you think we're going to see typical Arsenal arrive again? City this Sunday. Will they have the, bo the bottle for it? It's the biggest game in Arteta's managerial career. The league running. There's a North London derby in there. I'm convinced Liverpool will go the distance and give us a good rattle for the distance. I just don't feel like a three-horse race is going to go down to the last day. Someone's going to fall off. Someone's going to fall off. And my natural instinct, Joe, says it'll be Arsenal. I think the team that falls off is the loser. Being other than Arsenal, Liverpool won't fall off because you know their running is simple. They win all their games. They win the Premier League title. That's simple for them. I don't think they'll fall off. I mean, I could be wrong, but I don't think they will. the 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 team that's going to fall off is the team that loses between us and Arsenal. Because if we lose, we're third favourites. We're four points behind both of them potentially because Liverpool still have to win. But again, I'm kind of expecting them to do the business most times. So I think that. In the back of our minds, we'd know it'd take a, an absolute shitting of the bed from both of them for us to catch them at that point. So I think in the back of our mind, we could fall off if we lose. But same same time, I'm looking at Arsenal and going, they lose to us, Liverpool pull three points, we pull a couple points in front of them. They may fall off. They may prioritise other things. They've cost. They've got Champions League. They've got Bayern, and then they've potentially got us. Could be Real Madrid as well. They've got a tough side of the draw. Um, so the loser of our game, for me, will prioritise the Champions League. I think. I think that's just the the natural thing to to do at that point because you wanna 
maximise your chance of walking away with silverware. If we drop four points behind two teams with like nine games to go, then there's more chance of us being able to win the Champions League at that point. It just is. Like, it, it sounds crazy because we've struggled in that competition for so long, but it would be so out of our hands, the Premier League, that I would focus more on the Champions League. And then we've still got the FA Cup as well. You come away with a double. It's, it's not a bad season at all. But same thing for Arsenal. They lose. They, it's not a bad season at all, is it? But same thing for Arsenal. I think if they lose to us, they could crumble. I think they still have it in them, deep within them, um, to crumble. They've they've kind of proved that they may have moved slightly past that. They've got a few gritty wins. Porto was doesn't fill me with confidence or wouldn't fill me with confidence as an Arsenal fan in terms of performance, but it's a gritty win. I think if that Porto game happens last season, they're out. I think yeah, they're yeah. out. So yeah, yeah. they've obviously improved in that in that category. But my point remains the same. If whoever loses is going to focus on the Champions League, they're going to turn their attention. So it will become a two horse race, I think. I, yeah, I just, I just don't feel like a three horse race is realistic right at the end. I think someone falls off, and I, I unfortunately think it's one of us or Arsenal, and I'm inclined to agree that it's if one of us loses on Sunday, um, we will prioritize. Like you obviously don't take your foot off the gas, Premier League wise, because slip ups do happen. But all of a sudden, you lose that little bit of. I don't know, momentum, momentum, a like huge amount of momentum, momentum's involved. But look, it's in our stadium, man. It's in our hands. It's in our hands to do the job. A um, couple of super chats here. Big up for the super chats, people. Uh, Mancunian way. Martin, back again with a five. Appreciate you so much, Martin, for the super chats. He says, Foden left, Kovacic, Rodri, De Bruyne as a 10, Bernardo right, and Haaland up top. So no Grealish, Martin. You're going with no Grealish. I don't hate it. I, I, I genuinely I don't hate it, um, considering how well Kovacic has been playing over the last couple of months, and he offers us a lot of control. But I just think in the Eddie had, like, just go for it. Just just go for it, you know what I mean? Like, we should be stamping our authority on Arsenal in our, in our own ground. I, I do like that, though. I do like that setup you have going on there. Foden, I, I feel Kovacic and Rodri have a really good... Um, would it be fair to say that they kind of work well together, Joe? Yeah, well, there's more balance in the midfield, because I feel like... When you've had Alvarez in there, he's just so lost in terms of off the ball work. On the ball, like when we have possession, it's kind of doable because you just kind of move him up and get him as close to the box as you can because he's a striker, he's got striker's instinct. But in terms of out of possession, because we play a 4-4-2, him sitting next to Rodri as a, a, a number eight, a typical central midfield position out of possession, he looks so lost. He doesn't know what he's doing. Um, there's no balance. Kovacic, he knows it. He knows it. He's been there. He's done that. He's played as a six. He's played in Rodri's position. He's played next to Rodri. Like, he knows it. He's experienced. Yeah, 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 100%. Uh, Martin also asked in the chat, are we doing a panel show this week, a preview? We will, Martin. We'll, we'll arrange something, definitely, whether maybe Saturday or Thursday. I'm out Friday for... I've got some family commitments. So we'll definitely arrange something, Martin. We'll speak definitely before the Arsenal game. I want to get your thoughts uh, either here or, or on City Action. We'll definitely get you on. Um, and we'll get Joe on, of course, as well. 170 in the building. Wow. Wow. Make sure you <laughs> the like button. <laughs> That's insane. 170 people. Hit the like button and subscribe, man. Wow. People um, are like, bored. Oh, my God. Bored. During the international break, man. You guys don't like international football? So hopefully myself and Joe can give you a little bit more entertainment than international football. And if you want to help support me and Joe, there's a link in the chat to become a channel member. Uh, and then you got Mohammed here says, if Alvarez plays in midfield, we are done for. Mohammed, thankfully, thankfully, um, and Joe, I, I think the Alvarez midfield days are over. I think Pep tried it for a while. He was getting some return from it earlier on the season, just through GNA though. But I think if you watch the game with your eyes, he, he, I don't think he was ever comfortable in midfield, but he was getting GNA. Then when the GNA dried up, it became quite clear that he kind of had to put that experiment to bed. Yeah, because you saw that the last, I want to say, couple of games, you know, Anfield, he played off the left. He didn't play in midfield, he played off the left. That was just yeah, trying to get him in the team, knowing he has a, maybe has a bit of output in him. And we had a hole there because he didn't want to go with Doku. And there was no Grealish. It was like a baptism of fire for Oscar Bob. Um, so he decided to go with Alvarez and it didn't work. He got taken off. 
Um, and then against Newcastle, he was on the bench. He was on the bench, and when he came off the bench, he played up front. So, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm hoping that that means that he's he's decided to stop because it was bordering on sabotage. Pep trying to fit him into the team in any position just for the sake of having him in there. Yeah, look, you may think it's harsh, but for me, Alvarez, he's the backup striker. And, and for most other teams in the world, he's the main striker. But for Manchester City, when you have Erling Haaland, he's the backup striker. And he's a very good backup striker. Really, really, really good backup striker. Um, I think he lost his confidence for a long time there, Julian Alvarez. He didn't like where he was playing, and, and that's fair. Do you know what I mean? Some players don't like playing in certain positions. Cole Palmer didn't like playing on the left wing. Um, that was for sure. But um, appreciate the super chat, Mohamed. Um, but I think I'm... It brings me pleasure to say I think that the Alvarez midfield is is finished. But you could see him come off the bench um, if we're in need of a goal or, or, or whatever. So, yeah, it is what it is. Um, finally, I want to talk about something unrelated to, to Arsenal and the title race chat. Um, <laughs> we're talking earlier on about a lot of quotes we're getting from Kyle Walker. I don't know about any of you lot, but I'm getting a lot of quotes from Cancelo. <laughs> oh, not this fucking guy. Oh, yeah. Mate. Cancelo is doing a lot of talking recently as well. I get... At Man City, they were a bit ungrateful to talk about me like this. I've been an important player for them. There were fake stories about me at Man City. I've never been a bad teammate. I was robbed and assaulted at home. It's true. And the next day I was playing against Arsenal. These are things you don't forget. I left my wife and daughter alone at home, scared to play. Hmm. How do we feel about the Cancelo thing? No one fucking asked yeah. you to play, mate. If you wanted a, if you wanted a couple of days off because you've just been robbed, I'm pretty sure Pep would have gone, no problem, mate, sound. You're going through a bit of trauma. Have a few days off to collect yourself. You decided you wanted to play. And then when you stopped playing, you kicked off. You said, how dare you not play me in front of this child? Is he expecting sympathy? Is he expecting people to believe him? I don't believe him for one second. I mean, I would... Maybe I'd, I'd maybe side with him if this was the first time that he's done this. It's not the first time that he's left the club with a sour taste in the mouth of the fan base. It's not. He's cried his way out of clubs before. That, that's, that's where this comes from. I don't believe that he didn't do anything wrong because he's done this before. This is not new. This is Cancelo all over. He's done this wherever he's been. There was a journalist a few months ago now. I don't know whether you remember. He might have been a Portuguese journalist who said, this is not a Pep Guardiola problem. This is a Cancelo problem. This problem follows him wherever he goes. He plays really well, has a couple of years, spits his dummy out. Once out. It's, it, it's you know, one second everybody loves me, now they hate me. No. No, 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 no. You just got outperformed. And then you lost your place, couldn't be asked getting it back, going, how is this 17-year-old playing in front of me? Do you know who I am? <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then decided he didn't want a part of it. Nah, mate. Hey, he got sent out on loan to Bayern, spanked you in the Champions League, see you later. On loan at Barca, hope they buy you. They might not have the money, I don't know. But, like, I mean, <laughs> just, just get him gone. Like, I have no, no time for him whatsoever. It's a, it's a bad look when Bayern didn't want you after your loan. Do you know what I mean? They didn't really try to keep you. Barca aren't sure. City have no, no interest no, in keeping you. No, it's not you. Bayern didn't try and keep him. They went for Kyle Walker instead. Yes. They went for the yeah, other yeah, guy. Yeah. <laughs> That's how bad he was. That's how much they didn't want him. They went for the other one. He's got a, he's got a bad habit, Cancelo, of making himself the victim, doesn't he? I mean... Look, he did, he did get robbed uh, and he was assaulted in his house and that's totally horrible. No one deserves that at all. Awful, awful, awful. But everything around that, it was common knowledge that Cancelo was caught, caught by other players and, and people around the club in the tunnel um, before games, um, complaining about not being selected. And, and this was heard and this was spread around. Um, and look, I know we spoke earlier on about Kyle Walker going on to Rio Ferdinand's podcast. And one of the things, look, as much as I don't like Walker going on to Rio Ferdinand's podcast, he did say something that I, I admired and I respected. Ferdinand asked Walker, how do you deal with it when Pep doesn't select you? Now, this was in the context of, remember, he wasn't selected for the Champions League final, biggest game of his career, uh, and so on and so forth. 
And, and Walker said his response was very admirable. He was like, look, Pep does what he thinks is best for the team. You're at Man City because you know Pep does what he thinks is best. And who are you to kind of argue Pep Guardiola? You know, that, that, that sort of response. And I was like, that's what Pep wants. He wants people like Kyle Walker with an attitude like that who won't sulk. He says in the podcast that he never once knocked on Pep's door and said, why haven't you picked me for this game? Why haven't you picked me for that game? Or I'm not happy with this, I'm happy with that. It's Pep Guardiola. You do what he says. And I get the impression that Cancelo couldn't deal with that. Cancelo didn't like the fact that Pep didn't have Cancelo in the starting 11 week in, week out. Uh, and Cancelo's ego was so big. Now, look, for me, Cancelo is one of the most disappointing players we've ever had. And not because of his footballing ability. I think he's one of the most gifted footballers we've ever had at the club. I mean that wholeheartedly. And Kyle Walker on that podcast says that Cancelo was the best fullback he'd ever trained with, technically. Ever trained with, technically. And I agree. I think Cancelo, technically, as a footballer, was one of the best. He's one of the best ever I've ever seen. But his attitude lets him down. Magnificent footballer. That's why he's one of the most disappointed players we've ever had. Because he had every single opportunity and, and, and platform to go on to be amazing. Now, of course, defensively, he could have improved on a few things. But going forward, there's very few more creative and technically sound than, than Joao Cancelo. So it's so disappointing that his ego uh, and his entourage allow him to feel like this. He's been at Juventus, spat his dummy out there. Been at Man City, spat his dummy out there. Been at Bayern Munich, they wanted Kyle Walker instead. He's now at Barcelona. He seems to be happy at Barcelona, but they don't know if they have the finances to keep him. So I think he's a bit bitter about the Man City ending because he's doing interview after interview um, complaining about it. Look, he says another one here. Uh, Mr. Guardiola, he calls him, is much more powerful than me when he says something. I prefer to keep it to myself. I prefer to know that I am telling the truth. I feel fulfilled with what I did. I am a transparent person. I never lie. Mm. I think if you're a transparent and your ego wasn't so inflated, you'd still be playing for Manchester City. I mean, the sign of a liar as well is going, I never lie. If you, I mean, if you tell the, if you I said tell, I never lie on the stream, Joe, but an hour ago. <laughs> no, but do not understand where I'm coming from. Where like he feels like he has to prove to people that he's telling the truth. I mean, if you were telling the truth, people would just believe you. If you were a truthful person, people would just believe your side of the story. But you're not. You're not a truthful person. This follows you. This problem of you spitting your dummy out follows you everywhere you go. So no one trusts the word of what you have to say. Like there was. Now, I don't know if this was confirmed. I don't think it was. It was just a rumour. I don't know how true it was. I never really bought into it, but there was a like a not a, a a fight fight, like punches thrown or anything, but a little bit of like a you know, throwing balls and this stuff at training a couple of seasons ago with Cancelo and Fernandinho, I think it was in training, and it was like it didn't surprise me. It really didn't surprise me. He spat his dummy out. I mean like you said, as a footballer, he was in the team of the year. He was one of the best fullbacks on the planet. Nate, like, as a a footballer, as a fullback, defensively, we all know he wasn't great. But in terms of everything else, he could play left, he could play right, he could go forward, he could sit in midfield if he really wanted him to because he had the, the, the technical capacity to do so. But for some reason, soon as the going got a little bit tough... Mm. He got bounced out of the club by a 17-year-old. A 17-year-old who never played a senior minute in his career. And he'd been bounced out at the first opportunity and couldn't be asked getting his place back. Did he not back himself? Or was it, like you said, was it just his ego going, how dare you play this kid, this child in front of me? Do you know, like, do you know who I am? I am this great fullback, this team of the year fullback. How dare you play this academy? child in front of me like no your place in the team is earned you earn it on the pitch you play well you keep your place in the team it doesn't matter we're now at the stage where if you're not playing well you don't play i mean the the most recent example of that is kevin de bruyne at anfield he looked gassed his passing was off he got taken off don't matter that he's kevin de bruyne he got taken off because he was you know at, coming to the detriment of the team that's just the reality of the situation. Do you think Aguero never got taken off? Do you think players like that never got taken off the pitch? 
and Cancelo's throwing his dummy out because as a fullback, he lost his place for a couple of games. Mm. It was the it's best sad. thing to happen. Best thing to happen to the football club, him leaving. Because we went to four centre-halves and we won a treble. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. I, I think him leaving was one of the catalysts to us going on and becoming more unified uh, and winning the treble. But it's sad. It's sad. I just wanted to touch in on it because I've seen so many quotes from him today um, about the situation. But listen, you, you, you lie your bed or you make your bed, you lie in it. Isn't that the phrase? Um, we're eight likes off 150, which is absolutely wild. So eight of you haven't hit the like button, hit it uh, and get it to 150. We got uh, Briggsy, a returning channel member. Briggsy, welcome back to the membership. Uh, that is absolutely sick. Massively, massively appreciate your support. Anybody who becomes a channel member, anybody who super chats, you're really, really, really helping me and Joe more than you can imagine. And it just lets us know that we're doing something right and that you guys enjoy listening to myself and Joe waffle, rant, debate, laugh, whatever. It means you enjoy it and we enjoy having you here. So um, big up Briggsy, man. And if anybody wants to become a channel member, the link is in the chat again, and you can be just like Briggsy. Um, yeah, big up Briggsy, man. And then we got Muhammad here with another super chat. Big up Muhammad, man. Massively appreciate you too, my brother. He says, this is probably broke Barca tactic to drive the price. I wouldn't put it past them, Muhammad. Barcelona are, are, are in an awful state as well. Financially, the club is the club's a mess, but um, I, I don't care. I like. I'm not too arsed about making profit or, or breaking even on Cancelo. Just get him off the books, man. We don't need him. We don't need him. It'll be interesting to see what happens now at the end of the season because obviously he did pre-season with us last summer, didn't he? Uh, in uh, Asia. Wasn't it? It was Asia, wasn't it? Yeah. So <laughs> be That was weird. That was so weird seeing him rock up with all the boys like he like nothing had happened in the last like six months. Being like, all right, Pep. All right, lads. I'm back. I I don't know about you, but I was like, is there a potential remontade on the cards here? Like, is, is Cancelo going to work his way back into Pep's plans? But I get the vibe that Pep holds grudges. And um, once you lose Pep's respect, you ain't getting that shit back. <laughs> you know what I mean? Pep has fallen out with some serious, serious players over the years. Most notably, um, Zlatan. Didn't he fall out with Zlatan? And that was that. Listen, you're done. Don't care how good you are. You're done. Um, he pissed off Henri a couple times by basically telling Henri, you're not touching the ball. You are a decoy out on the wing. You're not touching the ball. Henri was like, jeez. Um, so I get the vibe that once you piss off Pep, uh, it, it's kind of hard to make a return. You're but, a much um, more forgiving man than me. Is there a return on the cards? I was sat there all preseason going, not a fucking chance. Not a chance. Because I, I, I was like, I had my... My mind was like, oh, he's just such a good footballer. If he just maybe comes back and goes, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, please, can I play again? <laughs> please, maybe. Mr. Pep. Please, Mr. Yeah. Pep. Mr. Guardiola, please. take me back. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. But then obviously Pep is like, nah, fuck that. His ego uh, would have went... never allowed him to apologise either. Nah, 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 nah. Players like him, nah. nah, nah. You sure he's on, he's on like 250, 300 grand a week? Like he's on big, big money, Cancelo. Uh, we're one like off 150, which is, wow. Like, tonight's stream, Joe, it's, I mean, it's been crazy, man. It's been crazy. I don't know why we've had so many viewers tonight. I don't know why so many of you are here, because we don't get these numbers normally, but I want to say we massively, massively appreciate all of you, all of you, all of you, all of you. I say this all the time. We're never looking to have a channel with 10 million subscribers and 10,000 people watching us live like loads of other channels. We just want a good community of people, a good group of people who come in debate with us laugh with us chat with us give opinions that's all we want uh, and you guys really do that it's a special group we have here on the hmtv channel third round of applause of the oh evening oh my job. god oh my third god 152 likes we're, we're live now for an hour and 20 minutes it um what he's, what he's got we sat here before the stream started and went and th there's not really a lot to talk about. We're, we'll just go with it and see what the chat comes up with because apart from um, things like the international injuries and the Arsenal game coming up, we were really like, there's not a lot to talk about. And we've sat here for almost an hour and a half and hit like record numbers. I, people are bored, man. This is what international breaks. Terrible, terrible idea. Yeah, but you guys in the chat, man, 150 of you still here, you've made the stream sick. You guys make this community so sick, man. I love... I I really don't care about like 
having a huge channel and being a YouTube superstar. I don't care, man. I just want good people, city fans, rival fans, whatever. And it's all respectful. It's all good natured. And like I always tell you, I'll always be honest with you lot. I said at the start of the stream when I was complaining about people making content about 115. I'll always be open and honest with you lot. Um, and I think you guys appreciate that, and I appreciate you guys too. Oh, Stacy! Big up Stacy! My good friend Stacy, what a legend over in Australia, I believe she is. Absolute legend. Just become a channel member. Welcome to the HMTV uh, community, Stacy. You absolute legend. I massively, we massively, massively appreciate you. We're going to make you a channel moderator, moderator now. Um, as a token of appreciation, um, you get that nice badge beside your name, you get access to the emojis and everything like that. We're never going to make any like extra content that's behind the paywall or anything like that because I don't, I don't see the point in that. We'd rather give you all of our content for free. And if you want to super chat, if you want to become a member, the option is there. It's just as, as a, a way you can support if you want to. But listen, Stacey, you absolute legend. Massively, massively appreciate you. And um, she says, hope you're well, boys. Love your channel. Thank you, Stacey, man. We love you. We love you. Um, but big up. I think we're going to wrap it up now because it's late. It's 12 o'clock here. But I'm so glad we streamed, man, because today I was like, oh, I want to stream, but I don't want to stream for the sake of it. And then we started the stream, and you guys have made it sick. You guys have made this stream so sick. So big up to all of you. Share it to a friend. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Hit the like button. Leave your comments down below. If there's anything you want to see us talk about, anything you want us to do videos on, I'd like to make more videos as well as stream. Um, we can do all that. We can do all that for you guys. You're a sick community, sick group of people. And uh, we'll be back this week, definitely. We'll stream again, maybe some more videos before the Arsenal game. And uh, yeah, man, big love. Big love to all of you. Look after yourselves. Look after each other. Um, and stay blessed. Good night and God bless. Wrap her up, Joey boy. Listen to your heart, tell me who you want to be, we can always start, start to believe, listen to your heart, tell me that you understand, cause you are the one for me, if you just believe, if you just believe, if you just believe, if you just believe, if you just believe.
Listen to your heart, tell me that you understand 